Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams, and it is a privilege today to get to visit with the head coach of the Southwestern Bulldogs, Coach Chet Pobolish, in his third season. And it's media day in Weatherford. So, Coach, thank you for visiting with me a little bit today. I, I know there's a lot of excitement on campus talking about Bulldog football, and rightfully so. Not only uh, are the Bulldogs looking to have a, a good season this year, but, man, it's good to talk football. Yeah, no doubt, Joe. I appreciate you having me. It's great um, talking ball and getting ready for the season. And um, everybody asked how my summer was. I'm just, I've been so excited just to get started. It's been a weird summer. You know, I, I just, just can't ex tell you how excited I am just to get started and coach some football. Probably almost feels like one of those summers that's just been going on forever. And But you go back to the spring, though, and you, you were able to get a couple of scrimmages in at the very least. Now, I know uh, 2020 kind of a wash to an extent, but you did get some time on the field, including come away with a pretty good showing at your alma mater at Emporia State. How do the kids look, or how did they look in the spring, and, and how does that push into where you are right now with, with camp looming? Oh, uh, You know, I – I was real pleased, not just with the victory at Emporia, but how we handled ourselves. You know, Joey, um, we went went to Hayes, and they got, got after us pretty good. And I think once we settled down, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And then we go to Emporia, and we really put – the offense really put the defense in some bad situations. We threw some – we threw it right to the other team, to be honest. I mean, we, 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 <laughs> we, um, and we got down, and I like the way our kids responded. I feel like in past years – you know, when, when some adversity would happen, I didn't, we didn't respond like the way I wanted to. And it was like, you know, okay, what's next? And I felt like at Emporia, the kids are like, all right, well, all right, let's just keep going and do what we're supposed to do. And, and, and things turn. I was real pleased with that. Not, not the victory part of it, but just how our, how our attitude was. Um, and I felt like it was almost a sigh of relief, like, okay, this is how it's supposed to be, you know, and, and how to get that message relayed isn't as easy as you'd think, but I was like, okay, I kind of turned. We weren't winning at the time, but I was like, okay, we're handling ourselves well. If we can continue to do this, we'll get this place where we need to get it to. So I was real, real pleased about that. You know, Coach, and and just to address that too, sometimes you can feel, even from where you are, the turning point in a game when maybe somebody in the stands doesn't recognize it as much because it's not being reflected on the scoreboard. But that's a, a big deal. Are are you seeing something like that then continue from that point to where you are right now? Yeah, it's it's to measure as much as it is in a game. Um, but, you know, to, kind of to add to that point, you know, the, our quarterback had thrown two picks, and I think everybody was looking to me like, what are you going to do? How are you going to address this? You're going to yell at this kid? And, I, and he just kept saying, I got it. I got, I got it, guys. Just, just stay with me. I got this. And, I mean, he did. And then um, that's just kind of how he is. And, you know, I hope that continues. And I hope, you know, it's a little different leadership style that he has. But I'm hoping that um, people understand it. You know, I always talk to our kids about calm in a crisis, and he's not going to get rattled. Um, and that's the kind of, you know, and we have a couple of them that are like that now. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that. So, yeah, I think it's continued. But, again, it's hard to measure as much when you're just practicing. But um, I'm seeing it more and more and the more and more consistency. And, you know, if we could have that same consistency and not throw to their team, I'd be more pleased. But, <laughs> you know, let them make some plays and let that be the adversity, not just handing it to them. I understand, uh, Coach. For you know, a lot of the fans then let to to think about people coming back to the stands, which is going to be a welcome sight, I'm sure. But uh, they're going to be looking at some new players, some new faces on the team. Seven returning starters, three on offense, four on defense for you. And specifically, you look at that quarterback position. You're going to have maybe a little competition in camp. Uh, some newcomers coming in to fight for that starting role, including Griffin and Kilpatrick. Can you talk about what that might look like? Um, there, there are two different skill sets and individuals and both are they're great leaders they're they're good humans um they're just a little bit different in their approach to the game and it, one's not better than the other it's just and it's it's kind of what you want a little bit in my opinion so if you have to one guy has to play you're not bringing in the same thing and bring different things to prepare and if both of them can play we'll try to find a way to get both of them on the field you know in some way shape or form um but i'm excited um, but yeah, competition is good for anything and any, you know, you don't want to just have something handed to you, but you know, they're, they're, they're winners and I'm excited what they bring to the program. 
In in light of that, then, Coach, uh, leading returning uh, rusher Kenny Graham, second on the team in, in rushing yards in 2019. We have to go back to 2019 to get something close to real statistics. Uh, I, I know that's it's tough to think about that, but going back to look at that, Justin Bailey also second on the team in 2019 in receiving yards for you. Uh, when you talk about players that are coming back, and those are a couple of the returning starters, but also, um, you know, you talk about camp too. Uh, in light of the fact that there are a lot of players that really haven't seen, you know, the the, the meaningful football, uh, how big is camp this year? And 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 is there competition really at every in in every position? Yeah, there is. You know, we're we're at the point now where we've got good depth, so you know, there's not as much of a difference in the one and the two as there has been in the past where. In 18 and 19, if we lost a guy at a couple positions, it was a pretty drastic, you know, whether it's an experience level or an age level or a physicality level, not just the ability. And I think we've closed that gap a lot where, again, just going back to the quarterback position, if one were to go down, I don't think there's that big of a change going to happen as far as production. Um, and, you know, the other thing with we have kids, we have, we're going to have freshmen, we're going to have redshirt freshmen, we're going to have kids that, you know, kids that, redshirted in 19, but we're still part of this program that haven't played a game since 2018. So well, any, yeah. any, any experience they can get, whether it's camp or what we did in spring or fall is, is going to be, you know, huge. Every rep that those kids get is going to be important um, because we're counting on them maybe more than, you know, their first reps <laughs> are going to be a little bit more important than, than maybe say it were if they hadn't, you know, had that year off or whatever. So. You know, Coach, that 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 is something I don't think that's been addressed as much. We we've been talking about and with some of the college football previews coming in. You know that some of the the things you mentioned, the the classification beside a player's name is is all but nominal at this point. You're talking about fifth year players and sixth year players, but you bring a valid point there. You're you're looking at a potential third year player that that hasn't seen a college football down. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and an actual third year, somebody that that's legit that you bring into the program that that hasn't played in so long. That's that's really something to consider. Um, well, we're speaking with Chet Publish, the South, Southwestern head football coach here, three and eight in 2019, three and eight in 2018 as well. This is your third season. You look at the defensive side of the ball, and I know that that's big. Do you have that same depth as well there? Uh, a number of players you feel a little bit more comfortable in. Talk about your defense. Yeah, you know, the best part there is we went through some growing pains because we played a lot of young kids early. Um, you know, you look at 2019 defensive line at, at any given point, you saw two true freshmen out there playing. Well, those kids now are, you know, two years later. So we went from playing with young men to grown men. You know, I know one of our, our starting defensive ends, RJ Powell, is a great example, Joey. He came to one of our camps as a wide receiver. Um Started as for us as a true freshman as a defensive end, and now you know four years later he's fifty pounds heavier. Um, <laughs> you know he's he's a man now, and it just you know things like that. Darius Franklin, he was here with me earlier for an interview. He played as a true freshman. You know he's now going to be a junior, whatever. That four years later, um, so we have a, you know a lot of those types of kids that um, have a lot more experience now on defense, and that's what I'm excited about. Um, we brought in a a transfer linebacker that, that I really think is going to make an impact for us. He's a, not just as a player, but I think he's one of those kids that you want an inside linebacker. He plays hard, practices hard, he's vocal. So, you know, just excited about that side of the ball and the things that they're going to do and what they're going to look like. So the season gets underway pretty quickly and, and realistically, I mean, it is right around the corner as we've uh, entered into the month of August now, September the 2nd. It's a Thursday night. We'll be there, by the way for Midwest Sports Saturday on a Thursday. I always enjoy Midwest Sports Saturday on a Thursday in Weatherford. That's a that's a fun way to open the season every year. You all are taking on Henderson State. Now, in your time uh, at Southwestern, 2-0 in season openers, 1-1 uh, one one against the Reddies. Uh, that's as far ahead on the schedule as I want to look right now, then, and I'm sure probably as far ahead as you want to look right now. Get one game going. Uh, what does it look like, then, about four weeks out? Uh man just worrying about getting ourselves ready as much as possible. You know, we know what type of an opponent you're going to get with, with coach Maxfield. I mean, that guy's a legend. He's going to, he's going to have a talented team and they're going to come in here and they're play physical and they're going to be well motivated. And I can't think of a better way to start back into football is to, you know, play somebody <laughs> like 
the readies. I mean, that they're going to give us everything that we want, and I don't think I'd want it any other way. And I think you know my motto, spot the ball, and um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it down. We're going to spot it, kick it off, and go play some ball. And that's, that's, what, that's why I do what I do. Now, I know that because I, I, I remember that from pretty much day one when you got there, and I, I enjoyed getting to hear about that. But uh, maybe some other folks who, who are following along, they, they look, they see Southwestern uh, on social media, and they see hashtag spot the ball. What, what exactly does that mean, Coach? Well, it means it has multiple levels of meaning, really. But what it mean, what we tell, you know, in recruiting is, you know, put the ball down, we're going to play. You know, I, I don't care if it's the Green Bay Packers or whether for jun junior high, you know, put it down. We're here to play football, Lambeau Field or the parking lot. You know, doesn't matter, rain and shine. And, but it's it's just kind of what we say, you know, in life. Oh, you don't have a season, COVID. Who cares? Spot the ball, you know, find a way. Oh, we got 500 pounds on the squat rack. Spot the ball, you know, don't make excuses. Just get it, find a way to get it done. And that's kind of what it means, you know, in a little more depth. But, you know, that's 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 my approach to football and probably in life. It you know, doesn't matter. Just put the ball down. We're here to play. So we know we're, we've got a tremendous opponent coming in here. Okay, let's go. Spot the ball. We're going to play. We'll show up. <laughs> Well, I know that the next time that uh, you and I get to see each other, I know we'll know a little bit more about this team headed again for September 2nd. It's a Thursday night in Weatherford at the uh, the newly named Flex Kim Field. I want to make sure I get that uh, get that right as well. Not that any of the fans are going to be confused as to how to how to get there, but uh, the Flex Kim Field, that's where you are there in Weatherford. Coach Chet Pobolish, success to you all, to the Bulldogs this season. We are looking forward to the start of the 21 campaign, and thank you so much for taking time with us today here as we preview the college football season. Again, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of media day, Coach. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir.